Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome all those that are watching tonight into our Friday Night Youth message. You're all very welcome, both young and old. Of course, we didn't plan to be recording this video, but with now the new restrictions that have been put in place for two weeks, we can't meet together tonight for youth fellowship. So we thought, as a youth committee, that it would be a good idea to still bring a message to our young people. But to all those that are watching, we trust and pray tonight that this video will be a blessing to your heart. We're going to have a hymn from our sister, Miss Victoria Salt, and it is the hymn, He Hideth My Soul. Trust and pray that this hymn will be a blessing to your heart. Feel free to sing along um, to the hymn, and we do thank Victoria for letting us use this video tonight in our message. And straight afterwards, after Victoria has finished her hymn, we will come to the Word of God. So we trust and pray that this video tonight will be a blessing to each and every heart.
We're going to turn in our Bibles tonight to the book of Psalms in the Old Testament. Turning tonight to the book of Psalms, and we're going to read together what probably is the best known psalm in the Bible, and that is the psalm number 23. Psalm number 23, and I would encourage you, if you do have your Bible, to grab it and to read along with us as we come to God's Word tonight. The psalm number 23, and we'll read the whole passage together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. We know that God will add his own blessing to the reading of his word tonight. I think it's fair to say that this year has not gone as we all expected it to at the start of 2020. This year, the events that have taken place in 2020, they have all brought about many changes to each and every one of our lives. Our lives have all been touched. Our lives have all been affected by what is happening in the world. And tonight that can even be seen in the fact that I'm recording this video to a phone camera and I'm not speaking to the youth in person tonight. 2020 has been a year of great trial. And it's been a year of great trouble. But one thing for the child of God that hasn't changed is the fact that God has been with us. God has been with us in every single moment of every single day throughout this year. And we can say like Samuel in the book of 1 Samuel, Hiller too hath the Lord helped us. You see, God has been gracious and God has been good in a time of great difficulty. And as we come to Psalm number 23 tonight, we're going to focus on the verse number four. And I believe that there are great lessons that can be learned from this verse. And we're going to simply uh, look at the title of Comfort in Times of Chaos. Now the verse number four of Psalm 23 is a verse that is usually read out in many funeral services when a loved one has passed away, or it's a verse that is used at the end of hospital beds to speak to those who are weary and sick. It really is a first of encouragement during hard times. But I believe that there is a lesson for us all to learn tonight from this verse in the Bible. No matter what situation we are all facing in our lives, I believe God has a word for us tonight. And these are words of comfort for the believer, but they are also words of challenge for the unsaved. There are three different points that I want us to see in the first number four of Psalm 23. First of all tonight, simply see with me that there is the dark situation. The dark situation. Read again the first part of Psalm 23 and the first four. And it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. First of all, this part of the verse gives us the setting or it gives us the context in which the verse is written. It is a time of darkness and it is a time of difficulty. Notice first of all that there is mention of the valley. Now in this verse, the idea of the valley is always linked or likened to a time of trial or a time of trouble. We often hear when people give their testimonies of those mountaintop experiences, of those times when God blessed them and God was good to them and they were living well for the master. But the valley stands in complete contrast to the mountaintop. The valley is a time of darkness. It's a time when our faith is tested and we have to pass through great difficulties in our lives. I think we can all agree tonight that we are living in the valley. Times are tough and things are hard, but these times are to be expected. And for the young people that are watching tonight, you're facing something in your lives that you've never seen before. Your personal life has been affected in many ways. You can't see your friends, as once you did, the school is even very different. It seems that nothing is the same as it was before. And tonight we can all agree, young and old, that we are walking through the valley. But not only is the valley mentioned in 
the first part of this verse, but notice also that the shadow is also mentioned, the valley of the shadow of death. And the shadow speaks of darkness, and we can certainly say tonight that there is darkness in our land. Spiritually speaking, there is darkness all around us, and there is never an easy time to be a Christian or to be a believer. But I believe, especially at this time, even for our young people in particular, it is a great challenge growing up in a society that has no time for God. Maybe there's friends, maybe you have family that make fun of you for your faith, or maybe it's just people who discourage you and try to distract you. You see, the shadow speaks of darkness, and we are in a state of darkness spiritually. But the command to the Christian is to stand fast in the faith. We are to be strong and we are to be bold, even in the darkness, because God is with us at all times. There is mention of the shadow, there is mention of the valley. But notice thirdly in this first part of the verse that there is also mention of death. And it seems like every day we are just hearing the numbers of deaths going up and going up caused by the virus. And we are constantly reminded day by day that people are dying around us. See the newspapers, the news programmes, social media and the radios, they're all covering bad news. News that lowers our spirits and news that causes us to become fearful. However, this is nothing new. See, look, David was writing here at a time when he too was experiencing great difficulty. King Saul was out to take his life. David was being hunted down by the enemy. And the reality is that death was close to David. King Saul wanted to kill him. And death is something that is very close to us all. Death is something that will come to us all. It is guaranteed that each of us one day will die. We do not know when that will be. But you see, when we have Christ, when we are saved, there is great comfort to know that we have no fear in death. Because death is the way, death is the instrument that God uses in order to bring us on to himself into heaven. That was the dark situation in this verse. But as we study this verse a bit more, notice second of all that there is the definite statement. David goes on to say in the verse, I will fear no evil. Here David is showing great confidence and he's growing, showing great faith in the face of adversity. This definite statement, what David was saying here, is that he will not allow the circumstances that surrounded him to control or take over his life. Notice the confidence in David's words. He says, I will not. David didn't say, I might not. David didn't say, I may not, or I could not. But he said, I will not. There was great confidence in his words. This wasn't weak faith. But how could David say such a thing? As we noticed, the situation was so dark. Saul was out to get his life. Yet David said he would fear not. How could David say such a thing with such confidence? Well, you see, if you read the first number one again, Psalm 23, David says, the Lord is my shepherd. David calls him his shepherd. And this shows us that David had a personal relationship, that David was saved and he knew what it was to be a child of God. And he knew that God's hand of blessing was upon his life. You see, David made this statement in verse number four because he remembered that God was able to help him in his time of trouble. And David goes on to say in verse 4, For thou art with me. I wonder how you've reacted to all that has happened this year, young person. I wonder if you're worried. I wonder if you're scared. Maybe you're full of fear of what's going to happen in the days that lie ahead. These are all feelings that we can have. However, do we let these feelings take over us? See, for us who are saved, we should be able to claim these words of David as our own. We should be able to say, I will fear not, for thou art with me. When we have God on our side, there is nothing to fear, for he is the one that keeps us safe and secure in his hands. We've noticed the dark situation and the definite statement. But thirdly and finally, very simply tonight, see that in the last part of this verse, there is the divine shepherd. See, the Psalm 23 paints a great picture of the Lord as the good shepherd who looks after and cares for the flock 
of sheep. And at the closing of this verse that we're studying tonight, we realise that there are two different instruments, there's two different pieces of equipment that would have been used by traditional shepherds. There is the rod and the staff. Let's notice how these tools would have been used by the shepherds back in that day and how that can even apply to us spiritually today. See, the use of the rod was to guard the sheep. See, the rod would have been a type of club that would have been wielded and would have been used by the shepherd in order to scare off and to distract away any predators that came near the flock, like the wolves or the foxes. And this shows us spiritually how God keeps us safe and secure how he will not let the attacks of the devil overcome us. The rod shows that God guards us. But the staff then shows us that God guides us. He is, you see, the staff would have normally been a longer pole that would have had a hook on the end. And that hook would have been used when one of the sheep would have began to wander away from the flock. And the shepherd would have used the staff in order to bring the sheep back into the fold. And this shows us how God desires to keep us close to himself. And how often do we wander by our own nature away from God? How often do we walk away from the things of God? Yet God brings us back graciously to himself. It is his desire that we would walk closer with him each day. This is the comfort in times of chaos that God is with us in every single moment. That God has a plan that God has a purpose in everything that has happened this year. While we may not understand it, yet God has planned it all according to his perfect will. And what a blessing, and what a comfort that is tonight for us. We are saved. You know, there's a story told about a Scottish shepherd, and he had a sheep that followed him everywhere he went. But you see, during its youth, that sheep always used to wander away from the shepherd's flock. And that caused the shepherd to spend many hours late at night trying to find the sheep in order to bring him back into the fold. However, one day the shepherd decided that he would break the sheep's leg. And he did this in order to stop the sheep from wandering away. But you see, the shepherd then looked after the sheep. He bound up its leg and he cared for it until it fully recovered. When that sheep's leg fully healed, when he fully recovered, the sheep no longer wandered away from the shepherd. Instead, he stood by his side and walked with him wherever he went. And this shows us our relationship with God, that we wander away from him by nature. But God has to break us. God has to bend us to show us that we are sinners and we can do nothing to earn salvation. But then God heals us. God saves us. And then that brings us into that perfect relationship with him. You see, young person, older person, whoever is watching tonight, you see these words that we have been studying. If you are not saved, you cannot claim them as your own. You do not know this comfort in this time of chaos. And I pray tonight that if you're not saved, that you would realise your need and you would turn to God tonight and you would know the blessing of salvation. Consider the Lamb of God. As John the Baptist called Christ, he was the Lamb of God. That Lamb that was taken to the cross. That Lamb that bled and died for us. He took our place and he died for me. He died for you. Well, I pray tonight that you'd realise that you're sinful, that you're in great need, and that you can do nothing of yourself yet that Christ wants to save you tonight. And then you can know this promise. Cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And for those of us who are saved, may we remember that God is the good shepherd, that he is with us at every time, and we will fear not, for he is with us. I trust and pray that these simple thoughts have been a blessing to your heart tonight. Let's just close tonight in a word of prayer, please. Our dear Lord and our Heavenly Father, we thank thee this for another opportunity, Lord, to study thy word together, to read thy word, and to spend time around the scriptures. O oh Lord, we thank thee for the blessing of having thy word in our own language. Lord, we thank thee even that we can meet online, Lord, in such a means like this, and even study God's word. O oh Lord, I pray that you would speak to hearts. 
Lord, I pray that you would comfort those who are worried at this time. O oh Lord, speak into souls that are not yet saved. Speak into the hearts of young people, Lord, that don't know thee. Lord, that be wandering off from thee. We'll bring them back into the fold. Save them tonight, we pray. For those of us who are saved, Lord, we pray that you would keep us. Lord, we pray you would protect us. We pray that everything that would be said and done in our lives may go down to the honour and to the glory of thy great name. Amen. So we trust and pray that you have been blessed as you've tuned in to our meeting tonight. We do hope to still have our meeting of Youth Fellowship on Friday the 11th of December. That will be our last meeting of the year, our Christmas service together in youth on Friday the 11th of December. So we hope to see you all soon. We trust and pray that you will keep well at this time. God bless and good night.